Welcome to this WiseOwl tutorial on SQL Server Integration Services, Data Types and Data Conversion Transformations. Here's what you'll learn in the tutorial. We'll begin by having a look at why data types matter, proving that when you try to export information from Excel to SQL Server, things can go horribly wrong. We'll then look at using data conversion transformations to solve problems like this. And then finally, I'll have a look at the list of the main SSIS data types. So let's get started. OK, so let's look at why data types matter in SQL Server Integration Services. I've got here a simple spreadsheet of all the SQL Server courses and why I'll give. I thought I'd throw in a quick bit of publicity there. And the column I want you to look at is the course name one, which contains a text description of what the course is called. And what I'm going to do is export that into a SQL Server table called TBL course. And it contains the same three columns, course ID, course name, and course number days. And again, I want you to look at the course name. So here's my package to do that already set up. Uh, beginning with the control flow, I've got a um, execute SQL task, which will delete all the old courses from the table, ready to start again. And then I've got a single data flow task, which will import all the courses from Excel into the new SQL Server table. So if we have a look at that in more detail, what it has is an Excel source, which is a workbook I've just shown, and a destination, which is a table of courses. So like I say, what could possibly go wrong? Well, one thing which could definitely go wrong is I could leave the Excel workbook open, which is something I'm prone to do. So I'm going to close that down. But the second thing which is going to go wrong is shown by this red cross. It can't convert between Unicode and non-Unicode string data types. And the reason for that is by default, Excel holds its information in Unicode format. So it sets aside twice as many bytes to hold each character as does SQL Server. So if we look in the Excel workbook in more detail, I'm going to do that not by double clicking on it, but by right clicking and choosing to show the advanced editor. So you can see on the last tab of this, which appears, the input and output properties. And you can see here, if I go to my output columns, that the course name is being created using a DT underscore WSTR data type or Unicode string. Now towards the end of this tutorial, I'll talk much more in much more detail about all the various data types and integration services. For the moment, DT stands for data transformation, the old name for SSIS. Um, I've no idea what the W stands for and STR stands for string. So that's what Excel is exporting. Here's what SQL Server is importing. Because I've chosen VARCAR, it thinks this is a non-Unicode data type. So I've only got two bytes set aside for each character rather than four. As it happens, had I just put an N in front of it, it would have created it as an NVARCAR data type, which is Unicode, and I wouldn't have had this problem. But then again, I wouldn't have been able to illustrate how to do a data type conversion either. So what I need to do is between my Excel source and my SQL Server destination, I need to add in a transformation which, which will convert the data type of the course name column into the correct format. So what I'm going to do is break the link there and then add a transformation between the two parts of the data flow task. So to add a data conversion task, I need to find it in the list of common transformations in the SSIS toolbox and drag it onto my data flow window. What I can then do is rename it. So at the moment it's called data conversion. I'll call it change course name column because that's what it's going to do. Um, and then what I can do is to drag the output from the Excel source into my data conversion transformation. What I then need to do, of course, is configure my data conversion to say what it actually does. And I can do that as usual by double clicking on this icon. Now there's no need for me to tick all three columns because the course ID and the course number days aren't being affected. So all I'm going to do is include the course name. And as always in SSIS, it makes it as clear as it possibly can what I need to do. 
So the first thing I need to do is to give this an output alias. So from now on, it's going to be called shorter course name. Perhaps not a great description, but it will serve for the purpose. The data type, and this is a crucial thing, is not going to be a Unicode string. It's just going to be a string. So dt underscore str. And that will correspond to a varchar data type in SQL Server. Now at the moment I'm going to get conversion errors, or rather truncation errors, because I've set the length to 255 characters. So what I'm going to do is abbreviate it to, let's say, 50 characters. And what that will do is automatically truncate it. The final thing I've got on this line is a code page, which if you're working in the UK or the US will always be 1252. But I can click on the drop arrow and decide to work in somewhere far more exotic and interesting instead. But I'm not going to do that because I'm not in an exotic or interesting place. So finally, I can choose OK to confirm that. And I've completed configuring my data conversion. What I can now do is take the output of that and feed it into my final SQL Server destination. And then I can configure my SQL Server destination by double clicking on it. And what I need to do is change the mappings, change what columns on the, from the input are going to what columns in the destination. You can see the course name is still going on to the course name. So what I can do is just click on the input column and change it so that the thing which is mapped onto the SQL Server course name column is actually my new shorter converted column called shorter course name. And then I can choose OK. Now I've already set that up to, me, to be my default package. So when I execute this, what I should do is I should see three green ticks as my data flows um, without let or hindrance from my source to my destination. Taking a wee while to do it, but there it is. And if I now go into SQL Server and right click on my TBL course table and choose to select all the rows, you should see that I've successfully imported all the courses from the Excel workbook. So here's a list of the data types in SQL Server integration services. On the left hand side we have the SQL Server data type and on the right hand side the corresponding SQL Server integration services data type. So you can see there confirmation that for string data types varchar in SQL Server corresponds to dt underscore str but the Unicode version of that nvarchar corresponds to dt underscore wstr. Moving on now to integer and Boolean data types, the main one you'll need there is dt underscore i4, which corresponds to a 4-byte integer, or int, in SQL Server. For floating point data types, you can use dt underscore r4, or dt underscore r8, corresponding to real or float, or dt underscore numeric for decimal or numeric. For date and time data types, there's a list there. And for other data types, for completeness, I've included a list for that too. I hope you've enjoyed this short tutorial on data types and data conversion transformations. You can find lots more online training resources on SQL Server, .NET and Microsoft Office applications at www.wiseowl.co.uk.